In this workshop and first exercise, I'm going to demonstrate the initial steps for setting up your Boomi Flow account and logging in for the first time. You can follow along with each activity and work on the activity as I demonstrate it, or just sit back and enjoy the show, then take time to complete the steps after I've demonstrated everything. Let us begin by taking a look at our activity guide and exercise one, beginning on page six. For exercise one, let us begin by showing you how to sign up for a Boomi Flow account. What we're going to do here is go to www.manywho.com. So enter that in your web browser search bar. As we've done here, you can see that we're on the ManyWho website. Now I'm using Google Chrome. I would suggest either using Google Chrome or Mozilla Firefox. Now what we're going to do here is either click on login or sign up. If you're a returning user, you'd be logging in. But since most of you are probably signing up for the first time, we're going to click on sign up and then we're going to provide the system with an email address. We can provide it with a work email address. It can't be any email address that would be, for instance, a Gmail, Yahoo, Hotmail, anything like that. You do have to use a work email address here. Then click on the blue sign me up button. Now the system will give us a pre-populated project space name. Here it gave me boomy-crypt. Now, Yours will obviously be different, and you can make this anything that you want it to be, um, for instance, for yourself. So I'm just going to make it Boomi Flow, and then give it a password, then click on the blue Next button. Now here we're going to provide it with our first and last name. Click on the blue Start Building button. It's all very simple and now what we're going to receive is an email. So what we want to do is check our inbox to verify our account for the system. Here I've gone into my email and you can see it's saying hello Brett and thank you for signing up for a new account. What we want to do here is click on the verify email address link and we're going to be taken into the login screen. So here we're going to enter the password that we recently gave, log in, and here we see the main tenant that I just created, which was Boomi Flow. Now, whatever your username was, this will be the top one here shown for you. These are just some of my other tenants and subtenants, and we'll talk more about this interaction of tenants and subtenants here in the, the upcoming parts of the workshop. So click on the main tenant, or probably the only tenant that you'll see here if this was your first time signing up. And now we're taken into the main tenant. Uh, this is our flows page. At this point, we're going to continue on and talk a little bit more about some of the Boomi Flow core terminology. Here, now that we've signed up for a new Boomi Flow account, let's take a moment to talk about that core terminology. Uh, what we'll be doing here is discussing a lot of the terms that you'll be hearing throughout this workshop and also some terminology that you'll often use in the future, most likely when working with Boomi Flow. Now, the first is the tenant. When you create a Boomi Flow account, you're assigned a tenant where your builder information, flows, content, metadata, assets, and service integrations are stored. This is also the place where values and other content will be stored and most commonly be accessed using a Boomi Flow drawing tool that we'll look at again in the future. A tenant is a user of a software application that serves multiple other users as well, so each tenant's information is invisible to other tenants. The Boomi Flow tenant is associated with your email address, and you can add multiple builders to a tenant and collaboratively build flows with other members of your team. Now, the concept of a subtenant, or the term, a subtenant is a new tenant under the same tenant account, so subtenants do not have visibility into the content, flows, values, or service integrations of the tenant, and vice versa. You can use different subtenants for different divisions of your company, for example, separate subtenants for HR and accounting. Subtenants can also help to organize your project, for example. You can logically separate out deployment environments into development, staging, and production. It's important to note that when you package and deploy a flow into another tenant, all the unique identifiers of all the elements in the flow remain the same. Tenants can all talk to the same database through services. We'll talk about services a bit more as well. So you can have many different tenants acting on a central data repository. 
tenants and subtenants are basically the same. However, you can log into a tenant and its subtenant using the same password with a slightly changed username. The username will typically be subtenant name plus tenant name. Now, tenants all have different usernames and passwords, so you need to manage multiple credentials here. Some recommendations uh, for flow building have a tenant for the generic flows in each industry. So a tenant for each industry that holds the generic flows should be used by all standard customers. Under each tenant, there should be a subtenant for development, staging, and production. Uh, have a tenant for each customer that varies from the standards template. If you're packaging a flow and deploying into another tenant, treat this as a one-time operation. If you're planning to edit the flow in the target tenant, when a package is deployed, it overwrites all changes in the target tenant. As a result, any changes made by flow builders will be lost, though they can be found through querying the snapshot API. Now these are obviously some higher level concepts that we can talk about more in the future and we'll talk about later in this workshop and other workshops or trainings in the future.